And I think we are live. No, we're all right, mate. It's okay. Oh, good boy. That's all right. I'm just talking to the talking to your fans. Yes, talking to your fans. All right, guys, and welcome to a another live. Um, as stated, this is going to be the last of like the Wednesday lives um, before I kind of reschedule uh, how I'm going to do this. Um, from the 1st of May, uh, I'm going to change my uh, working pattern um, in order to spend a bit more time with a girlfriend, etc. I'm sure everyone can appreciate that with this job, um, it does take up a lot of um, some family time. Um, so I'm going to change uh, to working on a Wednesday. Um, so I have to kind of reschedule. I don't want to lose these lives. So I want to uh, just figure out another way in which we can do it. And uh, like I say, the, trying to work out another live is not going to take away from any other videos. So you'll still get the video every Saturday. And I'm just going to work the lives around that. So uh, so yeah, this is a and a uh, slash talk. So we'll chat about some different things. You can ask some questions. Uh, a few people have been in the chat already. Sean Bartlett, uh, Portia, Danny Rolf. Uh, hi, everyone that's watching. Um, like I say, if you've got any questions, put them in there. If not, we'll just have a good chat. Um, I want to... Uh, Chip King, hi, mate. How are you doing? I just want to start off maybe this live. Um, I'm not going to... And name any names or anything like that but over the last sort of week or so um found out that uh someone someone has left the dog handling industry um who i feel like was quite a big part of it uh so that's sad um but he's doing it for his reasons so you have to appreciate and i kind of support support him in that um and then sadly um someone else who's a big part of these lives and part of the channel um, sadly lost their dog and just want to put my condolences out to him. Um, I know that he's, I know that he was a good dog. I know that he enjoyed working. I know that the dog loved working with him. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the hard parts of this job is that you get so invested in the dog. And I feel like I feel I, I want to not, not make a public apology, but, I had noticed that he hadn't been around uh, much lately and I did mean to send him a message just to see if he was okay and kind of stuff got, got in the way and I kind of ended up not messaging him um, then to find out that he was going through a tough time and I feel like we're, we're such a small kind of community as dog handlers as, as an industry and I feel like making time to, if, if you notice that someone isn't around that much and or they, or they seem to have gone off the radar a little bit, just sending them a message and just checking on them and just seeing if they're okay. Um, I feel like I failed him a little bit in that because, like I say, I noticed that he wasn't around much, but then I didn't actually get around to sending him that message. So I feel a bit bad for that. Um, and if anyone's going through anything, whether they're thinking about coming out of the industry, whether they've got a problem with a dog or got a problem with anything, um, I just want to let everyone know that you can always send me a message, whether it's via Instagram, through the Discord, whatever it is. You can always send me a message if you just want to have a chat and that. And like I say, I'll, I want to make a bit of an apology to him because I never got round to to actually um, to actually sending in that message. And um, like I say, he put he he sent a message today explaining why he hadn't been around, and I felt a bit bad for that. But hopefully, he's doing good. Um, I know that he's got. Um, some other dogs that he's doing some bits with that I know he's been that he's being successful with. So I wish him all the best. And like I say, if he if he ever needs a chat or if any anyone ever needs a chat uh, about anything, you can always just send me a message and uh, we'll have a chat about anything. Uh, Chip King, unfortunately, that's the hardest part of our life: lose our best friend. Yeah, it's I, I, it's one of the things that um, it's one of the things that I. I don't think about, but it's it, you know it's always on your mind that um, there is going to be become a time when this when this happens, and I, I think when especially if you're on the if you're on site or you're working alone, sometimes you, these kind of things can cross your mind, and I kind of I kind of think about the important part of this job is that when you're working with the dog, you have to try and give them the best the best life that you can, and I know that. The certain person 
um, who just lost their dog. I know that he gave that dog the best the best life he could, and that's why it with this job is when you go to work, you have to try and do as much as you can and and give the dog the best time on site. Um, not because not because you feel like not because you feel guilty that the dog's in the cage, but it's because no time is guaranteed. And like I say, he's like, he, they become family and they, be, they become like your best friend, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, it's, especially with this job, you just want to make sure that you give that dog like the best time you can whilst you got them whilst you're working, because like I say, no, tomorrow isn't guaranteed. And yeah, so it's a big part of life, isn't it? You do it, you do it with family and things like that. And the, the dog's, the dogs are exactly the same when it comes to when it comes to our jobs. So that's I just uh, it's just something that happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, Chip King, I've got a thirteen and a half year old shepherd. He's on my mind every day, and it scares the living crap out of me to know that it could be his last day. Yeah, I know I, I know you, and I know that dog, and obviously it is a part of life it's uh, one of the one of the truest sayings that i've one of the truest sayings that i've heard is that they are part of your life but you are their whole life so you like I say they don't they well you kind of hope they don't outlive you but no because of that you know at some point that you're gonna have to let them go but um again a little bit a uh, little bit teary-eyed now i was say but yeah, so like I say, it's uh, it's one of the, it's one of them things. And if anyone ever wants to send me a message about anything they're going through, whether it's a problem with the industry, whether they're thinking about coming out or whatever it is, um, you can always just send me a message. But yeah, any anything has anyone had anything going on uh, this week? Uh, was the Easter bank holiday, wasn't it? So we had Friday and Monday as bank holidays. Um, I worked Thursday into Friday, um, which you would have seen in the video, um, my recent video uh, about double pay. So, and then I worked Sunday night and Monday night on 12 hours. And then I worked last night in my normal 15 hour shift. And it's been reason it's been quiet. There's not been much going on. Um, on the site I'm on, we've had quite a few uh, badges around. Um, We've had quite a few badgers roaming around the old cat, the fox, just general wildlife, but no people, what no people or anything like that. But if you look, if you watch my video, uh, it's like the Hat and Garden weekend. It's um, the Hat and Garden weekend is like the weekend in which the Hat and Garden job was done. And if you haven't watched the uh, the drama series on ITV, I suggest that you do watch it because it's actually very interesting and. Um, it's, it's sometimes sometimes with our job it's you get the opportunists so a lot of people will be out and about on their uh, on their bank holiday weekends and maybe they'll just walk past the walk past the site and maybe there'll be an opportunist and maybe think well i'll just jump over this gate or whatever it is or go through this hole in the fence and i'll go and see what's in there so because more people are out and about and they're not out working or whatever it is <clears throat> it's uh Bank holidays can be can be not a busy time, but they can they can become more of a threat. So, um, like I say, Sunday Monday was was quiet, and then we're just back to normal now. And um, seems like all the workers had a had a decent bank holiday. Um, worked Thursday through to Tuesday morning, so that is a decent a decent stretch with uh, a decent bit of bit of pay. Uh, Danny Rolf, yes, I agree. I have a fourteen year old lad. He is so special to me. And I bless every day I have with him. Our, uh, our dogs are like our children and more. Yep. Very, very true. Very, very true. Um, so, yeah, look, I've got um, obviously doing this now and then I've got football training later. And then on um, tomorrow I'll be working. Uh, I've got shift tomorrow night. And then what, what have I got Friday? I'm just I'm, I'm quite busy this week. So uh, Friday, I think I've got to take parents to the airport because they're off on holiday. Saturday, um, got football and we're going around a friend's house. Sunday, back to work and then we're back into the into the normal swing of it. And like I say, from no, I won't be working Sunday because that's the first. So 
Um, so from Monday, I'll be on my Monday to Thursday shifts. And I'm going to see how that goes because it's, it's with my normal pattern now of working three days, then a day off, then one single day. Um, that Wednesday or like a Wednesday like it is tonight is a little bit stuck in the middle where I'm used to a shift of sleeping during the day and working at night. And obviously this Wednesday, I'll obviously sleep when I get home. But then I need to get some sleep tonight before work tomorrow. Now, I'll probably be up until maybe two, three o'clock in the morning on a, on a Wednesday and then go to sleep and try and sleep till like 11, 12 o'clock tomorrow. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to do like four straight days and see how I manage with that because I know after about, on, normally on the third days, I'm, I'm really tired. Um, so to try and go that one extra and just do it in a in a solid bulk be interesting, but also to then finish Friday morning and not have to work until Monday afternoon, um, that will take some getting used to. And and I'll, I'll be interested to see if I feel a bit better in terms of having a solid um, sort of what's that three three and a bit days off. Um, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. And like I say, I think. Working in a block is very different to maybe doing two on, two off or four on, four off or however however different companies work their work their shifts and that. So it'll be, it'll be interesting, but like I say, it's more to, to, to have a block of time and a whole weekend um, with, with like the fiance and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it'd be interesting and I'm, and I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to it as well because it will free up my Sundays where I'm not having to um, not having to worry about getting some sleep, um, not getting some sleep. Uh, I'm not having to worry about sleeping on a Sunday afternoon when all the football's on and, and then having to go to work. Uh, Moonshot XRP, 27 days on and free off. <laughs> but it, like I say, it is interesting and, that's why that's why with this job you can earn as much money as you want to because there is no real there's obviously some restrictions if you're PAYE, but there's not much um <laughs> jinx on you but there's not much kind of stopping you from from working six seven days a week if you wanted to and that's why i feel like this is a, is a nice um is a nice industry because if you only want to work three or four days like I do to earn the money that you want to, then you can. But if you decide that you want to work six days and, and earn a different amount, then then it's, it's very feasible and it, and it is possible. So obviously a lot of that depends on kind of your – a lot of that depends on your life outside work. Now, if I turn around to my fiancé and said, look, I'm going to work six, not six nights a week, and I'll see you on a Sunday. I can imagine what that what would be said about that. And to be fair, I, I think if it was the other way around, I think I would say the same. So it all depends on what your uh, it all depends on what your life is like outside um, outside work as well. Um, is that Zespric or Zespri? I don't. Z Let's go with Zespri. Uh, how do you pass time on shift? Now, there's lots of there's lots of different ways in which I pass time. Um, you obviously have you obviously have your downtime now. Even even when I say about doing as much as you can with a dog on site, um, you can't be out all night. You can't be you can't have the dog out constantly. He still needs to get his rest. Um, I think someone said to me before that uh, a German Shepherd should typically sleep around. 12 to 15 hours a day which is why when you have the dog at home normally you'll see the dog just lazing around and sleeping so there are times where you have downtime and i watch maybe some youtube maybe i watch a bit of uh like the apps like the bbc app itv uh amazon prime netflix um i obviously spend some time watching some bits and pieces on that um listening to podcasts i think is a good one so if you can get really involved if you get really involved in listening to some good uh, pod, pod, podcasts, um, mainly podcasts because you can, it's not a visual thing, so you can still keep your eye on the site. If you're lucky like I am where 
the site has security lighting so anyone that walks on the lights will flash obviously that's that will trigger me but uh so like podcasts but in terms of um in terms of sort of outside sitting in your van um there'll be different things like getting the dog out and doing some uh like obedience work <clears throat> and then maybe you'll get out and play some tug maybe you'll get the dog out doing some article search work and i think if you if you have a block of time like every couple of hours where outside of patrol you'll do a bit with a dog and maybe you'll listen to a podcast maybe you'll watch an episode of a show um but i feel like a lot of if you especially when you're especially when you're on shift if you can maybe change that up and maybe do a patrol after an episode of a show or maybe do a patrol after uh, listening to a podcast that becomes because not all shows and not all podcasts are the same length of time that's a good way for you to become um like if someone was watching you they can't guess when you're going to be out if you're gonna if you say right i'm going to patrol every hour on the hour someone that sits there and watches you for maybe six or seven hours will work out your pattern now if you do it after a tv show that's 30 minutes you'll be out in half an hour and then you may listen to a podcast and you may be out in an hour so if someone's watching you over a period of time though they, they won't be able to get your pattern of work um and that's why random patrols to me is the best way to do it um i know that certain companies have have different ways of doing it but being left to to do the patrols how you want to i feel is the, is the best way and like i say sometimes i'll do it so I'll say, right, I'm just going to watch this show, then I'll go and do a patrol, or I'm going to listen to this podcast, and then I'm going to go and do a patrol. And like I say, that be, that's a good way of not becoming, um, not being in a pattern. But I'd say getting out, getting the dog to do some some obedience work, maybe getting a tug out, uh, doing some article search work, and just getting the dog doing some bits and pieces is a good way to pass the time as well. And it's a good way in which you can... Um, it's a good way in which you can keep the dog sharp. So maybe not so much with the tug work because in order to keep the dog sharp on a one-to-one -one or like a standoff situation, you obviously need another person, which you which is helpful if you have uh, if you work in a team. So maybe there's two dog handlers on site. But being able to do like article search work or doing what you do at training when the dog uses the protection side of him, trying to bring that onto the site that you're on well when you turn up to work will trigger your dog into right this is what i do here and i do i do certain i do this certain protection stuff at this training site but i'm also doing it here so maybe if someone comes on if there's someone else on the site that's maybe what i need to do um so yeah like i say it's it's just about so it's 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 more about sort of wasting time because you have a lot of time in between um you have a lot of time in between patrols that you still need to keep yourself vigilant you still need to keep an eye on what's going on around you um but obviously you need to keep yourself entertained as well because there's no one that i know that could go somewhere and for 15 hours keep themselves occupied by doing these sort of things you have to you have to have something else going on just to keep to keep you sharp as well because if you sit around in your van in the dark in between patrols you can kind of switch off a little bit as well and maybe you can get a bit lazy so listening to something watching something keeps you keeps you on the ball as well well that's the way i think about it anyway um chip king youtube obviously obviously that that is a good one the, the good thing i like about youtube is that you can't complete it there's so much stuff on youtube that you can't complete it a bit if you have a tv show that you're not watching let's say let's for argument's sake say friends you you can keep watching friends and it comes a bit monotonous and you know what's going to happen but with youtube there's so much stuff that you can't complete it and you can literally spend like on a day off i could literally spend all day watching youtube and not watch the same thing or a similar thing twice um 
Moonshot XRP, but if you have a Mali Day out workers, yeah, Mali's Mali's are on the go constantly. Uh, Chip King, I'm on a building site. I'll get my dog to climb up onto scaffolding, onto bricks during the daytime. When I turn up, they have machinery moving. I'll get the dogs out, used to noise noise free training. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. So obviously. I, I'm similar, so on the site that I'm on, um, on the site that I'm on, when I first turn up, there's probably a good half hour to an hour where, or maybe 45 minutes to an hour and a half, where there's going to be people on site moving around and that sometimes there are machineries or there's cars moving around and it's um, it's good to get the dog out and get the dog used to it, but it's also good to get the dog out and be able to control the dog around people so if if i know if my dog's in the van and he sees people he will bark but being able to get the dog out and being able to get the dog to acknowledge the workers on site but at the same time not be not be threatening towards them um is, is good um and obviously getting the dog used to machinery and and different um sort of vehicles moving around them uh is is good it's good for the dog the same way is that if you had a pet dog taking the dog for walks down high streets or around busy roads so that the dog gets used to sort of cars or uh lorries and that being around them that's the best way in which they uh that's the best way in which they then relax and they get used and get their confidence um because that's what you want on a site you want on 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 the site that you're on you want the dog to be confident in his surroundings you don't want to walk on and there be machinery moving around your dog to be scared of it because that's that's no good for the dog and that can possibly cause that can cost possibly cause problems with the dog being unpredictable because they're not thinking about what they're doing if they're if they're on an edge they can become a little bit unpredictable so yeah that's a, that's a good thing about that's a good point to getting the dog out and especially when people are around being able to control the dog but make sure the dog acknowledges the people walking around, but to a point where he's not a threat to them. Um, uh, Zespri, uh, yeah, I'm not in dog handling yet. I have a working GSD puppy, so hopefully a career in the future. I do regularly, I do regular site security, and the only options for entertainment is movies and music. Sadly. Yeah, like I say, get it, it, get into podcasting. You could obviously on a smartphone, you can get uh, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Um, there's uh, the Canine Paradigm. That's a good uh, podcast. They got loads of episodes on there, and that's a couple of Australian um, kind of dog trainers um, that they do sort of the the sports side. But they un but when you hear them talk, you you understand that they it's very similar to training a security dog. Uh, so the canine paradigm, you've got uh, working dog radio. Um, I I think I listened to a couple of episodes and I kind of switched off to that one. Um, I think, I, I believe working dog radio is a single bloke so, and he has guests on. Uh, the, the, one, the thing I like about the canine paradigm is that it's two blokes every, every week and they bounce off each other and they're not afraid to call the other one out on a different kind of um, training, uh, what's the word? Like a training, Jesus Christ, like a different way of training. If you, I've, I've completely lost what I was trying to say, but like they bounce off each other. And if they feel like one of them is trying to explain something and not getting it correct, the other one will jump in and say, no, I think it's this way. And they don't always agree. And I think that's a good way in which podcasts work but then i like listening to um sort of comedians there's uh there's a good podcast i started listening to uh at the moment and um it's nothing to do with security dog handling and it's the wolf and owl podcast and it's tom davis and ramesh ranganathan and if it's a lot of them a lot of them is um a lot of their episodes is them talking about their mental health and um, they're obviously two comedians. So they obviously has a comedic side to it, um, but they have people that, that message in about certain things and they give their opinions. And I think that's a good, I think that's a good podcast, especially um, if you, 
listening to them too about sort of their experiences about uh, working sort of the comedy um, the comedy circuit and listening to them about the way in which they've gone about their lives with how they feel about their bodies and how they still have a positive output on it and I feel like that's that's a good podcast if you if you want to if you want to go down that route because it is still quite funny it is quite comedic um, they do take the take the mick out of each other um, but yeah like I say podcasting it podcasting is a good thing to get into if 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 you like that kind of thing um, Tom Bailey even and all hope you're well maybe a bit old school but really enjoying reading a lot of books at the moment keeps me going in between patrols etc. Uh, and such a good learning resource if you can do it. Yeah, books. It, that's something that we all. That's something that we all kind of have forgotten about um, at the moment, isn't it? It's because everything starts smartphone and things like that. Everyone forgets about books. And yeah, if if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you get yourself a Kindle and you you start going through books and that. Myself, I I can't read books. So I get very bored. Um, I get very bored with books. Audio books is maybe something as well. Um, obviously, nowadays a lot of people that that do books, um, listening to Josh Widdicom and Rob Beckett in on their podcast, they um, they they release their books, but then they had to do the audio books. So maybe if you if you're interested in books but don't like reading as such, or when you're on site you just want to listen to it, obviously audio books is another good thing. Um, Moonshot XRP, uh, watch plenty of dog psychologist vids on YouTube. You will learn, you will learn the dog's minds. Yep, I'll say that's another thing with um, that's another thing with like YouTube is you, you can get down that rabbit hole of, of finding people and experts that are uh, experts in dog psychology and things like that. And, I think that's a good thing about um, the Canine Paradigm uh, podcast that I listen to, is that they list, listening to them, they talk about that. It's obviously a lot of their opinion, but they will kind of put their opinion over to why they think their dogs do certain things, and a lot of it is sort of the dog psychology. And I think the one thing I've learned a lot off of them is that um, is that dog teaching dogs to do stuff is very similar to teaching humans to do stuff and and maybe dogs do certain things maybe dogs do certain things the same way that kids do and you can teach it out of them um in certain ways um chip king uh zespri you can take your german shepherd puppy to work with you but if you can't get your puppy used to walking through town and used to noises of, of vehicles But that's a, but that's an interesting. One. I, I've I've, I've, I've com I completely kind of switched off to maybe books and that kind of being a way to uh, to go. But I think I think like I say, audio books would probably be probably be the way that I in which I would do it. But yeah, books is very good. Uh, Moonshot, like asking the dog to do something instead of telling them. Yeah, I I think a lot of uh, a lot of dog training now. It's I'm more interested to to look in the way in which dog training is done nowadays because obviously I've had my trainer and it's kind of the only way in which I've learned how to train a dog. Um, and a lot of canine paradigm they they talk about different ways in which to in which to train dogs. And I think a lot of dog training now is has come away from like you being the pack leader and you being the dominant one and you and now you work in as a team and not as equals because obviously the dog still has to see you as the dog still has to see you as the one that's in charge um but seeing you more as friends and you're teaching your friend how in which how he has to act and certain situations how he needs to act in them situations so i'm i'm quite looking forward to um i mean i should i should probably start it now um, but I want to start looking into like different ways, like force free um, and that kind of stuff, um, and doing different, looking at different uh, ways in which you can train a dog because there's so many different ways to maybe how uh, trainers that have been doing this a long time have, 
I've, I've got around doing it. But I think the most important thing with dog training is that if it works and the dog has no detrimental effect on them, like there's nothing, the, the dog doesn't have any fear or whatever it is, as long as it gets the dog, as long as it gets, gets the dog to where it needs to be, um, it's obviously good. Um, it's a good way of training. Um, Zespri, Chip King, I was, I was for a time, but the managers had a problem with it due to insurance and things. She's very confident and very used to all noises. I take her near busy, busy roads frequently. So yeah, that's it. That's environmental training. And like I say, very important part of it. Um, cause you don't want to, like I say, you don't want to get the dog out and the dog to be scared of everything. And it's not good for the dog as well, because obviously you want the dog to be confident in, in every area and you don't want a, the same way in which if, if you were scared of, I don't know, uh, if you were scared of the dark, I wouldn't keep taking you and putting you in the dark because your mental, your mental health would probably have a, have a, it would have a negative effect. And if your dog is scared of moving vehicles or whatever it is, if you just kept taking the dog there and not getting them used to relaxing around that, it's obviously going to have a detrimental effect on the dog's mental health. Because I mean, I don't know, I don't know a lot about sort of how how dogs remember things and things like that. They're obviously very good at remembering certain stuff, but I assume that dogs' mental health is is very similar to humans, and maybe it's not talked about as much. And take like I say, if you don't get your dog used to being in certain situations or being comfortable in certain areas, keep taking the dog there and then being scared is is probably not going to be good for their mental health. And like I say that that that's when I feel like dogs. I'm not going to say specifically our dogs because I think it happens with um, I think it happens with um pets as well is that dogs can become very um dogs can become very kind of unpredictable and if you've taught your dog to um the protection side and something takes them by surprise and it's a, and it's a person then obviously that can have have negative negative consequences so like i say it's all it's all good to just get your dog as confident as it can because that's what that's what this job is is that you have a very very confident dog and when someone stands up to you and decides that they want to to hurt you or hurt the dog is that your dog just has to be comfortable enough to say no that's not going to happen and deal with that situation you i'd say in that kind of situation my dog would probably be more co more confident than me and that's why the dog takes the kind of lead. You call the shots and tell the dog what he needs to do, but the dog takes the lead in dealing with that kind of situation. So Zespri, I assume that you are I assume that you are static guard at the moment, looking to going into um to dog handling. That's a very similar. That's a very similar story to quite a lot of the people that I've spoken to. Um, there's a few people I've been speaking to that are static and or or sort of night guards that are looking to go into sort of the dog handling route. And I feel I feel like that's that's a much better way to do it. I don't know whether you work alone or whether you work in a team, but I I don't think I could work without a dog. Um, as a static guard during the night, I feel like just having that bit of backup for me is is the best way to work and probably the best way in which you can kind of enjoy going to work. I don't think I would enjoy going to a site and of a night and not having any backup. Um, I'd, I'd much rather have, have my friend there with me. <sighs> So what have we got coming up? The obviously we're starting to come into spring now, and the, I've, I've noticed that the days are the days are getting longer. It's starting to get light, sort of five half five now, and the evenings are going until like eight, eight half eight, which is is obviously very good for uh, for dog handlers because it means when I get to site, me and the dog have got more time to 
to maybe play a bit of ball because a lot of the stuff like I like playing ball when it's light because I can see everything that's around me. I can see sort of um, I can see the entrance to site and sort of the road that leads up to it. Um, you would have seen in the in the last video. There's that little grass, that little fenced off grass area, which is which is right by the road of the only way in and out of site. So obviously having that area and having the light to do that where I can see everything that's coming around and I can see anything that's approaching. Um, obviously the other night you have sort of car headlights, but um, in terms of like people walking down that lane, um, during during the day I can see them coming from probably three, four hundred yards off. So I can I can see before maybe the dog takes notice and I've been working on I've been working on him when a car goes when we're planning ball in that little grass area. I've been working on uh, with him if a car goes past, getting him to lay down and waiting until the the car passes and is gone before we start playing again. Um, this is all this is all within hand reach. So if he decided to get up, I could grab him. Um, but yeah, he's been very good at that, and I haven't I haven't really. Um, I haven't really worked on that with people because I say I haven't. I put him on the lead and we wait until the people walk past. But I I wouldn't do I wouldn't do that off lead just because of the dangerous dogs act. If the dog decided to go up to the fence and bark at the people, and then they would, if they felt threatened, they could call the police or call my company, etc. Um, but I've been working on working on him just laying down and being very neutral whilst cars go past and doing it on lead when people walk past and it's it's been very good so far. Um Zespri, uh yeah mate definitely I need to save up the money to get the training and qualifications, vehicle, etc. I do static guarding at night alone. Not the best. I'd much I'd much rather my dog for company and alertness. Yeah, no, I'd say that's uh, your, what you do is probably what I wouldn't do. Um, I do like having the dog to be able to alert me to noises, sounds, smells, and being able to read the dog when we're patrolling as well. Now, a lot of the site that I'm on at the moment, it's, um, like I say, it's foxes, badgers, cats, different things like that. But learning to watch the dog and the dog picking up on noises that are outside the site and are a good two three hundred yards away from me but my dog being able to pick up on that gives me the confidence that if i if someone was inside the site or if there was an animal inside the site i i could pick i could pick up on my dog noticing that and like i say it, it gives you much more confidence to walk around site and like i say a lot of the time he just walks around with his ball in his mouth and he's chilled out and i it, it puts you at ease and a bit of confidence walking around. I would hate to to have to walk around my site without a dog and walking around the corners or walking near the gaps of the uh, of the units and that without having the dog to alert me before we get there that he smells something or he knows that someone's there. Um, Moonshot, I, I feel blessed to be working with my dogs, watching them playing at the moment. It just puts a smile on my face. Zespri is in the Wirral, based near Liverpool. Is the, is the Wirral, is, I've always got this, I've always got this kind of uh, thought that the Wirral is a very nice area. Um, I know that probably working in, in Liverpool is possibly a little bit more dangerous than than other places but the world sounds like a nice place to be but i've never actually been um yeah I'd, having the dog out and having the dog out and being able to do um some sort of off lead exercise in that in that fenced off area is a very nice way to sort of get the dog into the shift getting them relaxed and it's it's one of the, it's one of the nicer parts of the job and if you if you watch the video where i say where i talk about just being able to burn off the energy of the dog and that's why i try and take uh, when i can i try and take the dog to uh, my mum and dad's before before the shift and play balls to burn off some of that energy because obviously whilst i'm here and i'm sleeping 
and the dog sleeping as well. And anyone that knows about German Shepherds, Malinois, whatever it is, that once they've rested and they're up, they do have a lot of energy because they've built it up over the five, six, seven hours that you that you've been asleep. So being able to get there and settle the dog into the shift, especially when I first turn up and there's obviously lots of people around. Um, once they're all gone, being able to get the dog out, do a patrol, and then go into that little fenced off area and plan a bit of ball can kind of relax the dog. So a lot of the time, whenever my dog's off lead, it's, there's normally not anyone around. Um, so my dog being off lead to him, kind of triggers him into right there shouldn't be anyone around here now it's just us and we're just playing ball it's just us two on here now so hopefully as well is that if I do that my dog my dog realizes that we are the only people that are meant to be on site so if I then leave that fenced off area and we go and start doing another finishing off or doing another patrol my dog will kick into right there shouldn't be anyone here so if I smell or see anyone that I need to alert my handler of, of what's going on. Um, Tesprey, it depends on the place, really. Wirral isn't too bad, but we've definitely had a few break-ins on the site I'm on. Other guards were one here, not me. I've not dealt with anyone yet. And that very similar, very similar to myself. So I've been doing dog handling for, what are we, month so i've been doing dog handling for about 15 16 months and i've had no one really on site i've had a few people by the gate or whatever it is but i've not had to deal with anyone one-on-one -on -one. and where other handlers on on my site have had to deal with a few situations a few people walking on um so a lot of it is the luck of the draw and this is why i think very early on in one of my videos um i said about stuff happening is not it's it's not like a constant um it's not like a constant thing and i i think that's why a lot of people get into this industry and then they end up leaving is because they feel like they're going to be going to work every night and they're going to have to deal with situations they're going to the police are constantly going to be out they're going to be having standoffs with people every night when the true the truth is is that you may have a couple a year you may have none for 18 months and then you might have a spate of two or three in a week it's it's not it's not one of them jobs that is all action um you can compare us to kind of you can com compare us to kind of police dog handlers but the difference between us and police dog handlers is that the police dog handlers are called out to situations where the dog is needed or the police are always going to find the trouble where with us on site, the trouble has to come and find us. And very early on, when a site first takes up, you may get a few people sniffing around. But as soon as they work out that there's 24 hour security and there's dogs on the site, it's very rare that they're going to come back. So I'd say probably the early days of a site is probably where you'll get the most kind of um, nosy people or maybe opportunists. But normally once the, once they realise the dogs are on there and they know that someone's on there constantly, it's, it's very unlikely that, that you're going to be targeted. Um, I think the site I'm on, in the so I've been on this site for about a year now. And from what I heard, when uh, when they first started up the site, they had a few people nosing around and turning up and trying their luck um but then they worked out that the dogs were on there and i think i think only once in sort of the last year or so uh, someone's actually walked on site there may there may be people that have walked past and or drove past on the off chance and seen us patrolling or maybe seen me doing a bit of um a bit of off lead exercise with the dog and they just carry on driving through and they they just forget about us so like i say the difference between us and uh, police dog handlers is that police dog handlers go and find the trouble or they get called to the trouble where we are kind of sitting there waiting for it to come to us and i'll like say once the, once people know that the dogs are on there it's it's unlikely not impossible but it's unlikely that people are going to decide that it's a good idea to walk onto the site well that's what you hope anyway
Um, Chip King, uh, sight I'm on, keep getting kids jumping over the fence. We, fence, we have to know your boundaries with the dog and what the law states. Yep. Um, yeah, I think the, the one, th the one thing about security dog handling, um, the, the one thing about security dog handling is not to make yourself a game and not to make yourself a target. So I'm not saying I'm not saying this is you, Chip King, but um, if you get kids that have nothing better to do and they're constantly around the site or whatever, and every time they rattle the fence, the dog starts barking or the dog starts kicking off, I can guarantee you that every time the kids walk past there, they'll rattle the fence. And maybe when I was 13, 14, 15, maybe I would have possibly possibly have been one of them people where. You just think it's a bit funny, kid walking past, rattle the fence, hear the dog go off or or whatever it is. And if they constantly get what they want out of that, you can kind of become a target. And maybe if the kids are uh, up the road doing something, they may they may think, oh, let's just go around to the site, rattle that fence, let, hear the dog go off and then we'll run off. And it becomes a little bit of a lock and knock down ginger situation where if you had kids pushing your doorbell and running off if you kept coming out and shouting at them and chasing them down the road that becomes a game to them um so a lot of a lot of the a lot of the stuff with security dog handling is is making sure that you st stay as invisible as you can for for certain for certain times now obviously if people break in or people are on site you obviously want to make yourself known and in a certain way you want to make yourself knowing that you're there but what you don't want to do is is become a target where if every time they walk past or every time they shout at the dog the dog kicks off because you don't want it to become a game um, and i think that's one of the important parts of uh, parts of the job is knowing when to when you can get your dog to fire up and when you just need your dog just to ignore them and a good rule is is that a good rule is is that if someone's not in your sight, then just forget about them. Like it, it could also be a distraction technique. Whilst you're dealing with the kids rattling the uh, rattling the fence, another one could be jumping over the fence the other side of sight and and trying to nick something. So if if they're not on your sight, you act as if they're not there, and as much as you can, you just get the dog to ignore and carry on doing what it's doing until they're actually physically on the site they're, they're not really any of your concern um and a good and a good thing is if they're outside the site causing a lot of a lot of noise and a lot of hassle um you remember you can always um use the disturbing dis, disturbance of the peace so if you call it you can always call the police and say that there's a disturbance of the peace um that's a good way to get around it as well but then you don't want that to become the game where they turn up, disturb the police, you call the police, and then they get to run away from the police. You don't want that to become the game as well. So like I say, the, my, my, my advice, um, well, my limited advice would be that only deal with people that are physically on the site. Whilst people are outside the site, you just, you just kind of ignore them and they'll get bored. If they kept coming there and rattling the fence and nothing happens, they'll get bored of it. Um, Moonshot Monday got the police out for the site behind me for two days. I could hear uh, chainsaw cutting metal, just dis, dis, uh, distribution place with no workers in. Yeah, and I think that's there was uh, just by me, there was um, uh, just my just by me, there's uh, they're cutting down some trees and that. And um, I, I, I thought I could hear um, some machinery starting up the other day, which I don't, I don't think it was in the end. But, um, but the site I was on before, so I was on a, a, a kind of derelict uh, old college, and during during the school holidays or during one of the lockdowns, it might have been there was some uh, some kids. And right next to the college is is a working school and on a saturday some kids run across the grass jumped over the cage and started playing football in the um 
started playing football in the in the cage like the the 4g or whatever it is but they had to climb over a i don't know was it eight ten foot fence in order to get in there and i knew that they weren't allowed to be in there and i was actually patrolling my area when they run across the field and basically what happened was is i just stood there and watched them with the dog and they stood there and watched me and they was just looking at me to see what i would do and they was a good i don't know three two three hundred yards away probably near a three hundred yards away and i didn't shout at them i didn't make it a game i didn't do anything i just kind of stood there and just watched them and they like i say they was a little unsure what to do because they was wondering if i was going to come around and throw them off um and basically they they then jumped over and started playing football now i wasn't i i couldn't really get to that area so there was no chance of me going in there and, and throwing them off so the best thing that i could do is just phone 101 and just say look some kids have broken into have, have broken into this uh sort of the the cage area they've had to climb over um it's school property it's obviously a saturday um it's in during the school holidays no one should be in there and i think about two hours or an hour and a half later a police officer turned up and and shouted at them from from the road and told them to get out and which they did um but that but that's the way in which i dealt with that is it was nothing to do with what i was protecting but as a member of the public you can still phone through to the police and say look this is what's going on they shouldn't be in there etc and like I say, I didn't make myself a target. I didn't, I didn't shout at them. I didn't do anything. I just done. I just phoned through to the police and said, "Look, this is going on. I don't think it should be. You deal with it how you want to. They're not affecting me. I'm not under any threat. So I'll leave that with you, and you can deal with that however you want." And a lot of it is, a lot of it is that is advising the police on certain stuff that if you're, um, if it's nothing to do with you. You can say, look, it's nothing I I can deal with. I just want to advise you. This is what's going on. I don't think it should be. You, I'll let you sort that out. And a lot of the time, the police maybe come down to you and say, like, can you just explain what's going on? And then you tell the the foot police about what, what's happening, and and it, and they and it's up to them how they sort it. Uh, Zespri, a guard had a call, had to call the police to our site once. And they brought the police canine out. The canine ended up redirecting on the police handler, apparently. <laughs> and I think that's um, it's strange because I've I've heard stories about um, I've heard stories about prison dogs that have that have redirected on handlers. Now, maybe that police canine is not. Is the handler that had him is maybe not his normal handler, or that normally happens when a dog is is multi handled. When a dog is multi handled, or if the dog is built up it through kind of like a frustration thing, and I, I don't want to say it happens, but I've seen it more happen with with Malinois than I have German Shepherds. But I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Is that sometimes through training and that the dog so much wants to, to to take the bite or it wants to do the protection bite or whatever it is is that it gets to a state where it just has to bite something and it's possible i mean i wasn't there you and i don't think you was there by the sounds of it is that the dog gets to a point where it's so excited and it so wants to do something that the person that's stopping stopping it stopping the dog from doing it i.e you with the lead they feel like if they can get you let you get you to let go of the lead then they can go and do what they want to do which is possibly the bite um i wouldn't say it happens i wouldn't say it happens often but i have seen it happen more with malinois than i have with with certain other dogs um but yeah maybe that's just frustration but then like i say maybe the um the dog's handler might have been off sick and it was maybe a, another handler that was working it and a lot of this stuff and I've, I've i've heard about this at training as well where certain dogs cannot be multi-handled because the moment you get that dog a certain distance away from the handler 
the dog will nail you. Um, and that's and that's through the dog not wanting to be separated from its handler. Um, but yeah, I'd say that dogs that are multi-handled where it doesn't have a constant um, relationship with people is that sometimes that can happen. And maybe that maybe one handler treats the dog a little worse than another handler. Therefore, the dog sees its relationship with the good handler and the handler it doesn't like, it's more likely to nail. Um, moonshot happens when it's uh happens when too much one aggression and bite work yeah i'd, I'd say that that's one of the things that i think that's one of the things i'm proud of with my dog is that i never i never made my dog uh too bite aggressive or i never made him um like whenever we find someone on a patrol in training my dog's first thought isn't to go up and bite that person my dog's first instinct is to do like a is to do uh, a standoff and wait for a threat to happen, and I think that's one of the one of the most important parts of parts of the the job is making sure you have a level headed dog as you can. That the dog's first fault is never a bite. The first fault, dog's fault is to do a standoff and to warn that person not to approach or whatever it is, um, and only to obviously um, protect with a bite on a on a serious on a serious um sort of incident or or on your command and i think that's one of one of the things i'm most proud of about my dog is that he, he is that way inclined and it, it was hard it, it was hard but um it's about not doing too much bite work there's so much more to this job than 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 bite work and i think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on having a dog that can protect you from every situation and the, the probably the honest thing to say about it is that at the end of the day the dog can only do so much and there are lots of situations where the dog can will be able to protect you a little bit but not totally so have, i think people trying to get their dogs to be the best biting dogs or the most aggressive dogs i think just end up having issues with real life like being able to like being able to take the dog to the park and being able to walk through a park or being able to take the dog down the high street and i think that's where you that's where you end up losing um some of the side of owning a dog it becomes it does become a, a tool and not a pet um when you can't take your dog to the park or when you can't take um you take your dog down the road it's, if you if, if you have a dog that's so um bite driven is that sometimes that can be unpredictable um maybe i was wrong in that maybe that look I, that that's just my opinion maybe maybe i'm wrong in that but um where was we um Zespri definitely seems to be an aggression arousal thing certain dogs are extremely drivey particularly malinois like you said uh several boarding sometimes that's that should get a nip um chip chip king uh my canine doesn't like being handled by other people and it would turn very protective yeah but i say it's, it's it's sometimes it's not a case of sometimes it's not a case of um one handler treating the dog badly or differently to to maybe another handler but it's it's very similar to you taking your kids out on a day out and whilst you're around they behave themselves to a certain degree but they behave themselves now you may then give give your kids to someone else or a friend's uh, a friend's parents to to go out for the day and they come back and they say oh he was really acting up or like i was asking him to do stuff and he wouldn't it's very similar where the kid sees you as the authority figure but when it goes out with someone else it pushes the boundaries to see what it can get away with and if maybe that that person uh, that their friend's parents don't lay down the law then the kid will get used to okay well when i'm with these people i can push the boundary a little bit where i can't with my mum and dad if if i give my dog to someone else 
and they take him for a walk, maybe my dog would pull on the lead and and pull him into all certain into the bushes or into trees or whatever it is because with them he's like well i'll see if i can do this and get away with it but he knows that if he does that with me he will get uh he will get told off for it um and like i say maybe maybe with your dog it's just that similar situation where the dog with you thinks well if i do this i'm going to get told off but if someone else is if someone else takes the dog the dog may look at it and say well i'll just try and push the boundary with this and see what happens and of course the first time the first time the handler lets the dog get away with it he's like right okay right i can get away with it with you and mate and that's a lot of the time maybe even even in the household where maybe the dog acts differently with the girlfriend the way he acts with me but maybe maybe there's things that the dog does in my household where the fiance will tell him off where maybe i wouldn't maybe i'll just go oh, like right, that's fine like i'll let him chill out so there's probably certain things within the house that my dog will do whilst I'm not here that he wouldn't do when she's not here because it's it's a different relationship he has with different people and sometimes it, and sometimes that can be different with kids like with in ter- in in terms of dogs and kids where the dog will look at the kids and say okay well you don't have any authority around here I'm going to see what I can get away with, with you and maybe the first time, maybe the first time the dog uh, snatches the ball or whatever it is, the kid doesn't. Um, the kid doesn't tell the dog that's not acceptable. Therefore, every time the kid tries to get the ball, maybe the dog snaps. That's where you come in and you say to the dog, "No, that's not acceptable. You're not allowed to do that." And the dog goes, oh, "Okay, right, I, I understand that now." uh not run buddy they are different reasons like i say everything i say everything i'm saying here is is my opinion and there's probably lots of times where i get myself muddled up and maybe i don't explain things the best way or maybe 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 i say stuff that i don't truly believe but i'm trying to explain something in a certain way and i think that's one of the problems with with doing live live streams is that sometimes you can get yourself into a bit of a rabbit hole and possibly say the wrong things but i i I mean i need i I never mean anything bad about anything i say but sometimes trying to especially in a live feed trying to think of like something on the spot um can, can be a bit hard um chip i can handle your dogs um so chip king and moonshot are good friends so they can they can look after each other's dogs and hold hands and skip. Um, but yeah, has anyone got any? Um, has anyone got any last questions? Um, we're just over the hour now. Has anyone got some one last thing they want to talk about, or is everyone happy? Um, I feel like we've had. I felt like we've had a good a good hour, a good chat. My throat's a little bit dry, I must admit. But if anyone's got one last thing. Um, Obviously, after this, after I end this stream, it will obviously become a video, and you can um, you can ask things in the comments. What I will do is I will do it now. So in the um, in the description of this video, there is now hold on, there is now going to be a link to the Discord group. So if you want to continue this into the Discord group, um, like I say, it's been a little bit quiet on the Discord lately. Um, but that's not always a bad thing. It's been a bit quiet lately. So if you want to join the Discord group and, and ask some more questions, um, then feel free. So let me just put that in there so I, nef- so I know it's definitely there. And you guys do as well. So there is now, uh, like I say, there's a now f- a fresh link to the Discord group. Jump in there. There's loads of information about certain things you'll need for your NASDAQ as well. There's uh, things like the Dangerous Dogs Act, uh, control of Dogs Act, I think it is. Um, so there's lots of information in there, not just us chatting. And like I say, you can go on there and you can see what we've been chatting about as well. And it's a good way to to ask questions and get quick answers. Um, I mean, I only do one of these lives every other week. Um, so if you think of something tomorrow, you've got to wait two weeks where in the Discord group, you can ask 
a question and I'd say within a couple of hours you'll have probably two or three opinions and you'll get the answers that you want um it's all policed it's all policed by me um and everyone in there has, has the best intentions for everyone else um so yeah like I say you never get any bad I, I never get any you never get any bad advice in there and maybe sometimes there's a bit of conflict between um a couple of handlers in terms of experiences but it doesn't mean that any of the any of the stuff in there is the wrong is the wrong maybe just two experiences are just seen two different ways uh zespri i would join the discord group great live have a great have a nice night i want to thank you all for watching make sure you like this video like i say all of the stuff that i do in terms of my videos in terms of the um in terms of the the way in which i work out if if something works or not is through the likes so if you like this if you like this video make sure we give it a thumbs up goodbye wednesday night lives it's not goodbye it's not good night it's not goodbye wednesday night lives they're just going to be moved there's kind of just going to find a new home they're still going to be around i still what i don't want to lose doing these and maybe we can sort something out. What I really want to do is get to, I want to get to a thousand subscribers. If I can get to a thousand subscribers, um, I'll be able to do live live streams on uh, a mobile app. And then when I'm on site, maybe I'll do uh, like a Wednesday live where um, I'll do a bit of training or I'll get my dog out and I'll, I'll live stream me doing a bit of obedience or a bit of articles, article search work. Um, like I say, I'm obviously, I'm obviously a fair. I'm, I think I'm just coming up to 500 subscribers, but at the moment I get to sort of that thousand, and like I say, maybe I'll be able to do some more live streaming on site, um, sort of work or or do some chats there. So like I say, it's it's they're not going. They're still going to be around, and um, and yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be back soon. So, guys, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe for loads more videos. I will see you again very soon. Don't panic. Look after yourselves. Look after your dogs. See you later.